tribes who lived just before the coming of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When those Arab tribes would send an army to conquer another town, they would enter into various valleys and climb various mountains. Whenever they would descend into a valley, the Prophet Sallallahu told us the jinn in the valley would flee. And that's normal, it's a normal reaction of a lot of animals, right? You know, just generally, you know, if you come across a big army, even human beings, you come across, you know, you're sat sort of in your little tent camping somewhere out in the, you know, the, the park and a huge army of people heavily armed, you know, sort of storming their way towards your tent, you're likely to get up and run. And that is the reaction of the jinn. However, what did these tribes used to do? They would settle themselves and camp in the base of the valley. And then they would raise up their hands and they would start to call and supplicate to the jinn. And this is something that is almost universally accepted in every culture, that there have been people in every culture, in every religion, who have worshipped the spirits, the jinn, the dead, whatever you want to call it. They have worshipped the jinn. So we see that throughout many cultures, and there are as many examples of this in Christianity and Judaism and Hinduism and Buddhism, of people who sought help and sought to call upon the spirits, call upon the jinn. So what used to happen when those jinn who had fleed from the oncoming army used to hear the people calling upon them and supplicating to them and asking them for help, then they would realize that these people had a fear of them. And once they sense that fear in you, they would attack. And what would happen is those people would be increased in their supplication because they would think, oh, these are really great spirits, powerful beings that can do so much to us. In reality, they were running away, but when they showed a fear of them, they drew them back. And this is a very, very important point. The jinn have certain abilities which may appear to us to be supernatural. And this is where we start to delve into the realm of the, the paranormal a little bit. And that is that the jinn clearly have abilities that to us appear to be supernatural. And this is where you get sort of the supernatural and the paranormal and you know the lights flick on and off and the doors open and the windows open, there's nobody there. The jinn do have abilities that seem to us to be supernatural. But I want to actually get you away from thinking in this way. I want you to actually stop thinking of the jinn as all powerful, supernatural, incredible beings. At the end of the day, when you see many different animals and they have an ability that you don't have, you know, you, you see the, the greatness of Allah and the creation of Allah, but it doesn't surprise you. When I tell you birds fly through the sky, you don't, you know, you don't get nightmares for you know, three, four days. When I tell you that fish swim to the depths of the sea, you know, it doesn't terrify you. So you shouldn't be surprised that there is a creation from the creation of Allah that is able to do these things. You know, they're able, some of them are able to fly, but the birds can fly, so that's no big deal. Some of them are able to uh, sort of take different forms, and that's something that is, you know, different for us. But again, it's simply what Allah has given them the ability to do and we see certain animals that are able to change their color able to change their shape to a certain degree that are able to camouflage themselves and again this is something from the creation of Allah and it makes us recognize the greatness of God and the creation of God but it doesn't necessarily terrify us and it doesn't make us fall into you know paranoia and various other things so we should be very careful with the jinn that when it comes to the jinn we recognize they are simply a creation from the creation of Allah just like the other creation that Allah has created, they have some things that they can do that we can't do and there are some things that we can do that they can't do. Understand that the jinn do not deserve to be feared. And as soon as you show them fear, they will take maximum advantage of the fear that you show them. As soon as you start to show them fear, they will play with you, they will pull out all the tricks. I'm talking about the windows will open, the lights will go on and off, human beings start appearing left, right and center, things start floating, knives start flying, pots and pans start going across the room. 
This is when you show them fear. When you don't show them fear, when you show them that you understand that they are simply a created being, you know, if they throw a pan across the room, I'd be tempted to pick the pan up and throw it back and say, you can throw the pan, I can throw the pan. As soon as you do this, they will stop messing around generally and they will stop causing you, you know, these kind of creepy paranormal type things that happen. Generally, they happen when people give them more respect than they deserve. They are intelligent beings at the end of the day. They have an ability to think. And therefore, when they see that you're terrified and scared of them, they are going to play on that. They're going to play pranks with you. They're going to joke with you. They're going to cause you all of these various paranormal experiences and these various sort of things that happen, haunted houses and all the rest. And in general, I have to say that since I've started doing Rukia, I get very little of these kind of paranormal crazy things going on. Every now and again, you know, I might get one person in 50 levitate off the ground. In general, most people don't. But the reason is that when you don't show them that fear and you don't show them that, you know, reverence, then they don't cause you as many problems. So we want people to stop fearing the jinn as though they are these all powerful spirits that can touch you from anywhere. Because this is going to take a person outside of Islam. When you fear them, like God deserves to be feared, like Allah deserves to be feared, then you're going to end up leaving Islam. You're going to end up uh, making a partner with Allah.